Hello, welcome to Health Professional Radio. I'm your host, Neil Howard. Glad that you could join us today. Our guest in studio is Dr. Art Caporal, president of Concepts for Health, a health and healing expert, teacher, and lecturer with more than 12 years as a consultant to the world's leading authority on the use of therapeutic and nutrient-dense foods, plants, and glandular concentrates and extracts, as well as phytonutrients and phytochemicals. And he's here today to talk with us about Concepts for Health, and about the sugar control diet. Welcome to Health Professional Radio, Art. Thanks for having me, Neil. You know, when you were uh, here before in uh, another uh, segment, we were talking about uh, concepts for health and your system of healing that um, involves, deeply involves the patient uh, in their own healing. Um, we talked a little bit about um, nutrition, um, the importance of a proper diet, and the importance of uh, proper diet not being across the board. Everyone's different. Healthy eating for one person may not be so healthy for another and vice versa. Um, Concepts for Health promotes a, a sugar control diet. Let's talk about Concepts for Health first of all, and um, then let's jump right into the sugar control diet. Um, when did you start Concepts for Health? Well, I it's, it's interesting. I, I got out of chiropractic school and uh, wasn't really happy with the results I was getting with my patients and some would get well and some wouldn't get well and there, it wasn't really consistent and I was fortunate enough to come across one of my first mentors that taught me about how the organ systems when they're not functioning properly can actually cause muscles to shut off and not function properly and it can cause structural problems and so what I found is that by dealing with the overall health of the person uh, I can remedy probably 75 to 90 percent of the chiropractor structural problems that actually occur. So I don't have to adjust my patients very much anymore, which is great. Now, I'm um, talking about uh, muscles turning off based on uh, poor diet. Um, can you yeah. can you counteract diet with exercise or counteract you know exercise with with diet, or do they both have to be a perfect balance in order to gain health? I think that they both have to be present. Um, one of the misconceptions is, and I, I had it early on, you know, when I was a young adult, is that I thought as long as I exercise, I could eat anything I want. Um, and I, I was a triathlete, and lo and behold, I did a lot of damage to my digestive system because my body does not handle wheat and, and high carbohydrate foods well at all. And so I ruined the uh, lining of my my stomach and so it doesn't produce as much acid as it's supposed to in order to properly digest food so I have to take uh, proper hydrochloric acid support in order, in order to properly digest my food and so th those misconceptions um, either diet alone or exercise alone it's it's a combination of both mm -hmm. The problem with exercise is that if you've got muscles that aren't functioning properly, and everybody assumes that if you have a weak muscle mm -hmm. or an inactive muscle, I'd, I'd rather say, that just by trying to strengthen it is going to correct it, but you actually have to get to the cause of why that's the problem. You know, if you've got a gallbladder that's not functioning or kidneys that aren't functioning properly or, you know, even a, 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 a digestive system, you know, the only time I get low back pain is when I'm constipated hmm. and, and my low bowels aren't functioning properly. And the only time that happens is when I don't eat properly and it hasn't happened for years. Um, but so there's, there's always a cause why you just have to find what the cause is. How, uh, how difficult is it or easy in your opinion to change a person's diet from, you know, the normal stuff that we all seem to, to put in our faces to whole foods and these nutrient dense foods that you talk about. Right. Um, well, when I, I sit down with my patient initially and we do a consult and exam and then I do a report of findings on separate visit. And during that report of findings, I outline what their responsibilities are and what my responsibilities are. And once we come to an agreement on that, then I, uh, we, we talk about one of their responsibilities is a short-term dietary change, and I have them do this for a month. I don't say that it's a lifetime change. The reason is is because there may be foods that we pull out that they'll be able to eat in the future. I don't know yet. But I pull out the most offending food for a month, and they have to be extremely strict on it. I make them write down everything they eat, and then 
at the next week's office visit, we look at what they've eaten and I look at their testing and I see how they correlate. Um, you know, a, a little side bar funny story is I had a patient come in once that she, she I started doing testing and she didn't tell me that she had eaten something she wasn't supposed to. And I looked at her and I said, when did you get into this specific food? And she looked at me and she says, you should just put the confessional on the door because, I, you know, <laughs> there's the the body will tell you exactly what is going on, whether you've eaten something you're not supposed to or or you need something else. You just mm -hmm. have to know how to look. And so, um, sorry, I kind of got off on a tangent no there. Problem, but No problem at all. Now, um, did that answer your question enough? Yeah, yeah, absolutely, absolutely. You know, when um when folks come to you, uh, and they've kind of I guess fallen off the the nutritional wagon, uh, for lack of a better term, um, how is it that you can um, convince them that just because you know once once the testing and the monitoring stops on your part, they have to keep doing this to you know maintain their health? Absolutely. Are there tips and and tricks, concepts, as it were, to to keep a person on track? Uh, because it's very it's very difficult to to think about all the things that you have to do just in order to make ends meet and, you know, live your life and make sure you're eating, you know, the right things when there are so many things right. that are fast and available to keep you to keep you going. Absolutely. So one of the things I'm I always focus on um, vitality, awareness and longevity. OK. okay, okay. And. Part of what I'm teaching my patients is awareness around how foods are affecting them. So, you know, let me give you an example. Say somebody comes in with a very severe pain syndrome, and I've actually had this happen. And we change their diet, and we add some supplements in and do all the recommendations that they do, and then all the pain goes away. And then, lo and behold, they eat something, and they start to get some pain back. And so they have to equate what they ate that pain and so what I'm trying to do is create awareness around them in their body so they can feel when they eat something how it affects their body and therefore they have a choice to do it or not chew it because if they see that it's one of the things causing their symptoms then then, then they can make a choice now do I want to live with the symptom do or, or do I not and then it becomes really easy for them because it then they're in, in the driver's seat. I can only be there to show them what to do. They have to make the choices every day. Now, let's talk about uh, sugar. You talk about a, a sugar yeah. control diet. Is, is there a reason why it's called sugar control rather than sugar depletion? Yeah. It's, it's, actually a sugar, it's actually a blood sugar control diet. Oh, okay. um, one of my mentors... Uh, actually took this diet from what's called the page food plan. Um, it's a modification of the page food plan that uh, was developed by Melvin Page, you know, and if we have time, we can talk about that later. But um, it, that, that specific diet helps to stabilize blood sugar. And so uh, in, in stabilizing blood sugar, you create a whole host of changes within the body. Um, and so I'm not, I'm looking to pull out sugar. Everybody has to stop eating sugar. Um, you know, as far as a patient of mine, sugar and sugar substitutes, but things like high carbohydrate foods, bread, cakes, candies, cookies, mm -hmm. um, even high carbohydrate fruits can be a problem for some people. And even high carbohydrate vegetables can be a, a problem for some people. So just because it's a vegetable doesn't necessarily mean that it's good for that particular person. So I like to create a, a low glycemic diet um, that helps stabilize blood sugar to see how they respond over the course of a couple of weeks. And then what my job is, as kind of a, a detective, is when they start to feel better and their testing starts to get better, then I systematically add specific things back in one at a time so we can see how their body responds. So say they're doing really well on their food mm -hmm. and we add a specific food back in, they have to write down what they ate and then how they feel over the next, you know, probably three to five hours to see how it affects them. And then we start to create that awareness that I'm talking about. So basically keeping a diary of uh, their intake and watching the results. Yeah, absolutely. Okay. So you, yeah. you train them in this while they are seeing you. And then when their visits kind of um, back off a little bit because they're doing much better, 
then you're there with them to support them at, at their with their home uh, uh, endeavors. Yeah, absolutely. Yes, and they can also text me or email it, me. You know, any time if they have specific questions. Right. Um, you know, that's 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 away from an office visit. I, I'd rather get those questions and get, I mean, a lot of those questions are really simple to answer um, and it puts their mind at ease and then they really feel that they have the uh, the 100% support from the doc. Um, but as the patient gets better, then our visits get extended out longer and longer. I have some patients that have to see me every month because they want that accountability. I have some patients when they get well, they're okay doing every three months or four months or six months. Um, it just depends on how well they can support themselves. And I guess with them being so involved in their own health care, they have a good handle on when's the right time to, to keep coming and when's the right time to kind of back off. You know, you know, absolutely. Uh, the only caveat to that is if, if they have like a big stressor issue or they have some major thing in their life or or they start to have a downturn and, you know, they're not feeling well or maybe they're not sleeping, you know, then, you know, come in and we can do another recheck to see what's going on. Um, I'd rather nip things in the bud early than make a point of uh, putting it out, you know, another two months for their visit when it can deteriorate to an issue where you got to actually do a lot of work to support it at that point. Tell our listeners um, how they can get in touch with you and learn more about the concepts for health and um, all of the services that you offer. Absolutely. The best, unfortunately, my my website went down yesterday. We're in the process of building a new one. Mm-hmm. Um, so mm-hmm. I'll give my, my direct phone number and they can call me if they have any questions. Right, right. Um, my direct phone number is 559-475-8611. That, that'll be the best way to get a hold of me just because I don't know when my new site will be up. It could be a week. It could be three weeks. Well, well, when it's up, we're hoping that you'll uh, shoot us a link and uh, let us know everything's working. Absolutely. All right. Thank you so much. You've been listening to Health Professional Radio. I'm your host, Neil Howard, and we've been in studio with Dr. Art Caporal, president of Concepts for Health Incorporated. He's also a health and healing expert, teacher, and lecturer with more than 12 years as a consultant to the world's leading authority on the use of therapeutic and nutrient-dense foods. He's been in studio with us talking about Concepts for Health. It's been uh, a pleasure having having you here with us today. Thanks for having me, Neil. Thank you. Transcripts and audio of this program are available at healthprofessionalradio.com.au and also at hpr.fm, and you can subscribe to this podcast on iTunes.